Hey, this is Zach Peak. Hey, this is Pat Dorian. Hey, this is Drew Rob. It's Anthony Video. You're listening to the Talking Birdie Podcast. Fly ball left field. Meet McLeod is there. And the magical season of the Baltimore Orioles continues. Ball and two strikes on goals. Round ball to first. There's Pierce. And the Orioles are champions of the AL East. And everybody knows he's ready to fire on the first one. Bases loaded. Young swings, line drive. That is down and to the wall. Cruz is in. Pierce is in. Party around third. He's going to try to score. And save. The Orioles have the lead. With the first selection of the 2019 MLB draft, the Baltimore Orioles select Adley Rutschman, a catcher from Oregon State University. Before we get started, <laughs> you're good, man. Say it. I can cut it out. <laughs> um, do you guys want to do a seven round mock draft before we get started? Of what? <laughs> oh, shut oh, up. <laughs> <laughs> you fuck off. <laughs> and then we can critique each other's after we're done. Oh my god. <laughs> I asked of what like it mattered. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, really, it applies for, for anything. <laughs> How about instead of that, we do a 20-round uh, MLB mock draft? Oh, my God. That's Let's do it. <laughs> There's this kid out of this D3 college in Massachusetts. Really like his fastball. I think the O's are going to go. Yeah. 16th round. Yeah, I've been really, uh, I've been really getting into the uh, Pioneer League lately. Horizon League baseball is a real treat. <laughs> are we still recording? We are. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, then let's get this shit rolling then, boys. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's another episode of the Talking Birdie Podcast, episode number 31, to be specific. I'm Ryan. I'm with Josh and Brad. Boys, how you doing? Doing good, Ryan. Opening day right around the corner. I am three work, four work days away from having to drive down there right after on Sunday. Uh, excited. It actually feels like it's finally here. Went through that long-ass offseason. Just good to have baseball coming in. Brad, how you doing? Pretty good, man. Two days removed from watching my alma mater win a national championship. Pretty, pretty dank. Yes. Uh, Bay Sox starting on Friday night, and then I get to hang out with a couple idiots on Monday and watch a little opening day action. So no complaints overall here. Some fun times ahead. Ryan, what's good with you, bro? Three idiot Orioles podcasters all together. Yeah. Watch out. Watch out, Kevin Yards. Have you, have you hit Rob up, Rob Long yet about – about the uh, about Kansas because I know he was giving you a little bit of shit when he was on here about about KU. Uh, yeah. Well, I was commenting on his Twitter and he was liking my uh, liking my comments back because he was asking who is now the best coach in college basketball after Monday night, and I said, well, I don't like making Homer takes, but it's actually got to be Bill Self as far as active coaches go, and here's why. And he liked it. He agreed with me. So. Very good. That, well, yeah, that, congrats on the yeah. congrats on the title, bud. Did you? How did you celebrate? Um, I went out and grabbed Taco Bell with a buddy of mine, like we did last time. Kansas won the national championship. <laughs> uh, I also had a bottle of wine that I bought as a decorative when the tournament was canceled in the 2020 season because they finished number one that year, and they didn't even get a chance to play for the championship. Yeah. So I was really salty about that. So I bought the decorative bottle that said AP number one the coaches and uh, <laughs> AP and, co- and coaches poll. And I said, I wasn't going to open it until they actually won a national championship. So the bottle of wine got drank between myself, my friend and his girlfriend. So I just, remember you being really upset when that happened. Cause you were like, you're like, oh this God. is the best chance they've had to win a title in the longest time, and the tournament's not happening. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty lame, dude. So I'm glad they were able to get it done two years later. And then, yeah, like two years on. Yeah, that's awesome. And this team, just... his team was nowhere near as good as that team either. It's just everything kind of felt right. So what yeah. span of time was it between championships for them? Oh, uh, 14 years, 08 to 2022. Okay. 
Yeah. But Kansas is always good, though. They're, yeah, yeah, they're always I mean, good. Yeah, they're they always good. NBA prospects like nothing. Yeah. I mean, this is like one of their least talented rosters as far as NBA prospects go. They probably have one NBA player on their route, maybe two, but probably no actual like NBA stars. So the team just came together and uh, the bracket fell right and they got it done at the right time. So here's to that. If we can, we should go back to uh, Morgantown for a football game again because I had so much fun. Uh, September 10th, I'm definitely going. So September 10th? Yep. Why do I feel like I'm busy that day? I'm not, Specifically I'm not. in like <laughs> six months. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. It's because um, my wife and I just booked our anniversary trip, and it's the week before. Okay. No. So, yeah. If I'm oh. moving in Pittsburgh in early September, I will make the two-hour drive to Morgantown. Dude, it's a good oh, yeah. time, man. It's a good it time. is fun. People are really nice because Kansas sucks. I actually <laughs> think we ha- we this time we have a – a chance. We didn't have a chance last time we went, but we actually have a chance this time. Hey, man, you were thrilled. They covered. They covered the spread, yeah. They were like three <laughs> touchdown dogs, and they covered the spread. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, didn't they, they pick off uh, – was that Will Greer? Will Greer, yeah. They picked him off like three times, and I think they strip-sacked him once, two, too. Like two times in the end zone. I yeah, think. something like that, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a fun game. It was a very fun game. Yep. That girl behind and- you was talking all that shit. Yep. Like, can't, she, she was like, can't spell suck without KSU. And you were like, that's Kansas that's State. Kansas State. So <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong school there. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> anyways, yeah. Um, yeah. How's it going for you, bro? Well, pretty good, man. Pretty good. Like Josh said, I'm super excited about opening day. Uh, got the clearance to get off a little early so me and Josh can get down and uh, partake in some festivities before the game. What time are you guys getting down there? As soon as we can. Uh, I'll be leaving work at like 1.30, going to my parents' house. Oh, okay. Just cleaning right. up really quick, and then we're going to head right down. So I would like to be there by 2.30. Okay. So at what, 3, 3.05? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, make sure you have everything planned out with where you're parking and all that. And I don't want you to, I don't Already, want you to miss the start of the when game. I bought the, when I bought the tickets, I bought a, I bought a lot pass. All right. Perfect. Yep. So. Yeah, we wouldn't be driving down otherwise because it's it's a shit show on opening day. I would say just catch the light rail or something. Yeah, I already talked to my boss. I'm taking off Monday, so I'll be there. Oh, nice, Sweet, man. for sure. Yeah. Did you grab tickets yet, or are you? Uh, you no, but that? I'll probably do it uh, tonight after we record or tomorrow because uh, they don't look too bad. So I need cool. to talk to you about your methods because I want to try to go to Cleveland's opening day on next Friday. Deal. So, see what's going. I've never done it before. Deal. It's easy. Go on resale sites. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much your answer. This man sounded like it was calculated. Just. <laughs> <It's not> uh, calculated. <laughs> well, it, it, in a way, it is. You're calculating the market if it's like a sold out game. But honestly, the Orioles' cheapest tickets right now aren't looking bad. Um. So yeah, I mean it shouldn't be a deal at all. It shouldn't be a big deal at all. Or even if you want even if you want good seats, uh, which usually if I'm going to an NFL game recently, I've been getting the better seats, but because it's usually drunk idiots that are sitting up high. But <laughs> um mm-hmm. the, I, I mean, they generally get more desperate to drop the prices as it gets closer to game time. But I'm looking at prices right now and they don't look too bad. So I'm just gonna buy it tonight. Nice. Sweet. How mm-hmm. close do you think you're going to be able to get to us? Probably pretty close. Even if not, whatever. I mean, we'll figure something out. There's always yeah. an empty seat somewhere. Yeah. On opening day, there tends to not be, but we'll see. Yeah. We shall see. All right. You guys been bullshitted for a little bit there. Um, let's get into it, man. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today, especially since the uh, opening day roster finally came out today. Uh, which we've been waiting on that for a while. A lot of teams have put theirs out already, but we finally got ours. Um, but before we get into that, uh, I guess we can discuss the trade that happened last week, or not last week, this week, uh, that sent Tanner, Scott, and Cole Salster to Miami. Um, it seemed a divisive issue online, which I can't seem to figure out <laughs> why. But uh, yeah, Josh, what, what do you think about this? What do you think about this trade? Man, like, 
this is like such not a hill to die on for anybody that was on like, you know, what are you trading our two best relievers for? Like we're the 30th bullpen in baseball, dude. Like we are losing Cole Salter was a good reliever last year. It was, he's a 32 year old career minor leaguer who had one good season, probably best to get rid of him. We're not actually losing a key part of the team. Really? Uh, we got back a 17 year old center fielder who, from what I read, has some pretty decent upside as do most 17 year olds. They talk about online and, uh, and, Antonio Velez, who's a starting pitcher. I believe he made it to double A last year. He did. Put up yep. some pretty impressive numbers and uh, just adds to the uh, pitching cupboard, as uh, Dan Connolly would like to call it. Uh, but I, I, I think it's a good trade. Makes a lot of sense for both parties involved. Marlins are trying to make an underrated push this year. The Orioles are not. So might as well give them the reliever that in Tanner Scott, where everyone's been talking about for a few years to be kind of this guy with elite stuff. He just can't find control. And uh, the Orioles have spent five years trying to figure that out. So I think it works yeah, out. Dude, I watched Tanner Scott and Bowie and the, the guy just. Oof. This 2020 Man. was great. I mean, ERA plus 361. It was only 20 innings. And then this year he was as unpredictable as all hell. He's got a live arm. He just never really put it together fully, but. Honestly, a trade for me, I guess it's pretty dope because I don't have any connection to Tanner Scott or Colt Salsa. I <laughs> couldn't care less about I couldn't care less less about us getting rid of them. And we yep. got the number 67 pick. I haven't even looked at the guys that we got in return. It sounds like we got some decent upside guys that are at least worth tracking in return. So even before I look at, into those guys, we got the 67th pick. Sweet, cool. Let's see what we can do with that. And we got three of two guys I don't really care about. So yeah, totally like, glossed over the graphic. Yeah, that, that's pretty yeah, cool totally too. did. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably the. Uh, I mean, I think that was probably like the, I guess, the centerpiece you could say of that uh, that trade is that pick. I mean, that's kind of the range what the O's took Kyle Stowers. So like you can, exactly. you can get you yeah. can get talent there for sure. Um, I mean, what we say, sixty seven overall, sixty seventh. Yeah, that's too, not too, too far too, from Gunnar Henderson range either. Yeah, it's true. So, yeah, it's it's that was probably I think the main the main piece of that. And like honestly, like I said this in the group chat, I don't think anybody else really seems to see it the same way that I do. But like, I think there's a lot of value in just clearing the roster spaces and getting something for them because like they could have easily DFA'd those two guys and gotten nothing for them. But like the fact that they got something when they they are they needed the to clear the spots anyway, just because guys needed to be added to the forty. Um, it cleared the spot for Felix fucking Batista. Let's yeah. go. That's a yeah, it it that excites yeah. me. So it did. So like, you know, everybody wants the prospects up. That's what we're doing. There we you go. Know, we're getting yep. rid of this. These we're finally starting to see the placeholder slowly, but surely being filtered out of this team. Still got, still got a few to go, but we're getting like closer. you said, I we're believe you said earlier, there's still some trash to take out. <laughs> yeah, oh, and yeah. I agree with you, but it is coming together slowly but surely, and I, I like it. I like that. There's guys that are going to be ready, and they need to have a spot to come on the roster when they are. So, it's yes, honestly sir. a shock that we didn't trade them earlier. I mean, we're a rebuilding team who's and both of these guys don't exactly fit into the rebuild schedule whatsoever. Maybe Tanner Scott, there's an argument, but I mean, he wasn't playing like that. And um, I think them to get rid of these guys when they did a bullpen, it's like the least important thing on a rebuilding team. We are not losing a whole lot. And you've seen how fast the the talent can change. Like with Paul Fry last year, he was lights out first half of the year. And uh, not so much the second half. And uh, who knows what Cole Salters this year would have looked like. Tanner Scott could be a month of throwing away from a Tommy John, as can any hard thrower like him. Mm. I don't know. Just makes a lot of sense to me. I'm not going to bring that energy towards him, but yeah, it could happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he dude throws like almost 100 miles an hour. That's the, Those guys are more susceptible to those things. Of course, we don't wish that on him. No. Yeah, Mr. I mean, Scott, good luck. We wish good your luck. son the best. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm fine with seeing those two guys go. I mean, Soul Serve was random. a guy that they picked <laughs> up. That so random. Put together a an okay, you know, year last year. Yes, he was our best reliever, but the standards for being the best reliever on the team with the 30th, uh, you know, ranked bullpen and ERAs. 
not a very high uh, bar to clear. No. So, no, no, uh, no. Yeah, he, I mean, he was a 170 ERA plus last year. I mean, he was like a good reliever, but not like you're saying. The thing, yeah, I mean, he was good last year, but he's not a guy that you can expect to build on it. No. Right. You know, he's not a young guy that's in his development. The guy's 32. I think that's probably the 170 ERA plus, probably more a flash in the pan, if I had to guess. Yeah. It's the guy who put together a nice year, but I mean, how, how can you really expect? He was due to regress, just plain and simple. Yep. So, yeah, it's a fine trade with me. Um, I got no issues with it. No. I don't think we fleeced them or anything like that, but, you know, good move. In my uh, for Antonio Velez, just to clear up the numbers, uh, in high A, he made 20, 20 appearances, 3.0 ERA. Uh, no really impressive like per nine numbers in there, but outs and outs are outs. <laughs> and uh, three starts in double A, he had a 0.5 ERA over 18 innings. So something to look at there. Oh, okay. I keep, I keep seeing like that he's got outstanding control. Yeah. I mean, his walks per nine is literally one <laughs> over his minor league career, which is 99 innings. So that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. Okay, I, this is random, and I'm sorry to bring this up. This is not in our notes, but I saw this because I started playing MLB The Show last night, the new one. And, you know, they got the scoreboard up with, uh, you know, the, the player's picture when they're at bat, and it has the, uh, you know, all their stats from the year before. And I had to just pull this up to see if it was correct. <laughs> Did you guys know that Robinson Chirinos had a 778 OPS last year? only played like six games didn't he is that why <laughs> i'm quite certain that he had like a mini sample size okay he only had 97 ab's so yeah that has something to do with it more than but, six uh, games but yeah. <laughs> i just saw 778 ops and i was like that seems really high <laughs> for that a like, catcher <laughs> that's not known for hitting <laughs> while we're on the topic of catchers that are not known for hitting did you guys see severino got a 80 game suspension yeah, it's pretty unfortunate, actually. Did you see the Did you see the details of it, Brad? No, no. Um, yeah, him and his wife are apparently trying to start a family, and they were having some fertility issues. And when they they went to see a doctor in the DR, which doesn't sound like the DR follows the like, FDA regulations, um, but they gave him this this medication mm. to help with fertility, and apparently it uh, he unknowingly he took it unknowing that it contained a PED. Yeah. Oh, that kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. So MLBPA first, was, like, deleted the tweet for some reason, but yeah, that was up for about 20 minutes and they took mm-hmm. it down. Yeah. So it's unfortunate, unfortunate, but he, he put out like a statement and he was like, you know, I, he's apologized. He's like, I'm not going to appeal it. This is, you know, my mistake. I mean, it was just, it was, I, I think very sad. I never yeah. had a problem with Pedro Severino other than the fact that he's not a good baseball player, <laughs> but uh, he seemed like a good guy. Every, I liked I his energy always, a lot last year, yeah. man. He, he made me laugh every time he was on the field mm-hmm. <laughs> for whatever reason. He would always get fired up after like a, a clutch pitch. You know, yeah. if he called a if he called it a good pitch and the you know the pitcher you know painted the corner with a fastball to like get an inning inning strikeout, he would get all jacked up. And I like that. I like that. So I feel bad for him. I really do, but he seems to be handling it well, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if they want to spend more time with trying to make that family happen, you just got half the season to do so. Yep, got a lot of time <laughs> to get up in there, Pedro. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we can we can we can cut that out if we want to, or or not. Actually, or, I don't think we, I don't. Yeah, think it's we literally fine. <laughs> we don't yeah. we don't have to. Okay. All right, Josh, why don't you take us into our next next point? Uh, I'm try- trying to pull up the numbers right now for it because I did not do that. Uh, just give me one minute. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I'm going to just guesstimate because I can't find them at the moment because I'm not updated. But Trey Mancini was extended for this year. I believe there's a mutual option for next year, which means that he will be out of here after this year. Yeah. I believe yeah. it was for like, what, $8.6 million for this year or something like that. No, I think it was... I think it was like 7.5. That's pretty solid. Yeah. 
He won at eight. They ended up at 7.5. I mean, so. they avoid arbitration this way, which I guess mm-hmm. is something. But yeah. I think arbitration gets pretty nasty. It, it sucks, man. Like, I've heard yeah. players talk about it. They just like they're, the team's goal is to try to make it sound like you're a worse player. So they throw out as many uh-huh. stats as they can to make you sound like you're garbage and stuff. And I mean, yeah, it, it's ugly. So who is it like in those arbitration meetings? Is it the GM that's no. saying this guy sucks or it's definitely like some like blue. team official that like is good at discussions like that, I it's guess. Probably like, someone from like the analytics department or something. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely no one we know. <laughs> yeah. This guy fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> we want to keep him just for we just don't feel like paying him that much. Yeah, we'd like to so have him, but you he, suck, he, but he like kinda... not enough for us to get rid of you. Yeah. No, we're not yeah, going to trade it's, you it's, either. It's a whole, it's a very ugly thing. So I hope they get something done similarly with means pretty soon. I can't believe the numbers they're in there for means. Like they wanted like 300K extra or less or something. Means is literally asking for 3.2 <laughs> mil. <laughs> yeah, that's a little so wild. Ridiculous. Pitchers that like are his comp make like 18 mil a year. Like we're, we're free agents. Yeah, but you know what they're going to say? They're going to say how bad he was coming back from that injury and without being able to use the sticky stuff, he was a much different pitcher. But then he recovered a bit. I thought he had a strong finish. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't care. (laughs) That hurts their uh, case there. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) Uh, By the way, use Neil Diaz uh, two for four tonight with an RBI and outfield assist. Potential fantasy draft selection. (laughs) <laughs> now if i pick him first for anybody <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh they finally settled with trey good news i guess um i don't even think of mancini when i think of this roster anymore as bad as that is to say but uh understandable i mean there's just a lot of bright spots and he's i mean he was out for 2020 you know for reasons we all understand uh yeah monster 2019 but 2021 he came back not as good as 2019 and like no fault to the guy who recovered from literal cancer but it's just i don't know when you look at like numbers and stuff it, it changes yeah like how you look at it i made quite a few homer bets almost all the ones that were available to me and i did not take trey mancini he had 201 odds to win the mvp i didn't so sorry, by the trey. way everybody um brad no, followed- no, we'll, 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 we'll leave that we'll leave that for the end Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave that for the end. We'll circle back. Yep. So next on the on the topics is um we're gonna do it's it's a pretty common thing everybody does going into the season, but we're gonna do it ourselves. Uh, team award predictions. You know, we're gonna do a team MVP, team Cy Young, Rookie of the Year, uh, you know, most improved and reliever of the year. So um, we actually didn't discuss this. Do you guys want to for each category? We'll each give ours, or do you want to just run through it ourselves Let's do like each category so mvp everyone will say who their mvp was okay and then go to the next thing all right um i usually go first let's start with let's start with brad we we'll go brad josh me all right team mvp i gotta go with ryan mountcastle this year yeah there's pretty much three solid candidates to pick from i would say between rutschman mullins and mountcastle but i'm feeling this is mountcastle's year so that's what i'm going with yeah, me too. Dude literally had like a 900 OPS after April last year. If he can just keep that <laughs> throughout the full month of April or just not suck that bad in April, he will be he would have had a better season than Mullins and would be MVP this year, I think. Yep. He looks pretty good in the spring. Hit a couple big bombs, but I am not gonna go with Ryan Mountcastle. Just because you guys did. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's plenty of cases to be made, so understand. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Cedric. I think he builds on last year, and hopefully, a little bit more quality in the bottom of the order. Maybe saw those solo shots he hit last year. Maybe they start turning into two and three run bombs, and he can get those RBI numbers up. Yeah, I hope his uh, spring was just randomly cold. I hope he can come out of that. That's not uncommon, though. That's not uncommon. No, definitely not. I mean, Austin Hayes hit like a 1.2 OPS last year in the spring and did not come out the gate like that. Well, and you see stars sometimes. They they just don't give a shit in the spring and they'll have like 100. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go Rudy O'Dor's doing. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. A star. That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yep. So um, I'm I'm going I'm going to go Cedric on that one. Solid okay. pick, respectable. Brad, who you got for Cy Young? I'm gonna say DL Hall. Let's go with DL Hall. He's gonna get the call. He's gonna show some nasty stuff, and let's go. Yeah, DL Hall for Team Cy Young. I'm taking the very uninspired answer. John Means, give him the full run this season, man. He he missed about two months, I think, last year. Full season, John Means is an above average MLB pitcher, and we currently have none of those. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Jordan Lyles literally exists. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I went six and two thirds uh, of oh, two run okay. ball with Jordan Lyles on MLB The Show last night. Get off, dealing, bro. Get off a of rookie mode. I hate that he's playing so well in spring. <laughs> I think he's given up like Why? one run. Why are only... you mad that he's actually pitching well? He's, only he's had... not supposed to. He's only had, what, five or six innings? I think he got like 10 innings in. He gave five up innings. like two runs or something like that. Oh. Look, you guys can hate Jordan all you want, but I, I am the it. leader of the Jordan Lyles fan club. Okay. Oh, my God. No. So, <laughs> fuck you guys. Jordan Lyles is my team. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not going to take it that far. <laughs> not going to take it that far. I was I was actually going to say DL before you did, so I'm going to stick with that. I think DL comes up. I think I think shows everybody what he's got. Uh, Josh and I were talking about this the other day. Uh, I I kind of think we can look we can look for kind of like what the Rays got out of Shane McClanahan last year from DL. They have a similar profile. Um, so that's what I'm looking for out of him when he does make it up. And I don't think it'll take long. Oh. No, before all star break for sure. Hopefully by May. I mean, they left him in Sarasota to monitor him more closely. Hopefully that uh, he's up and here build sooner up. than later and build them up. I mean, yeah. like he's coming off the injury. You got to make sure he's good, but then, you know, you can build a guy up a lot faster if he's just, you know, staying in extended spring as opposed to pitching on pitching in a rotation. Yeah, and don't even doubt Kyle Bradish having like a Cy Young type season for the Orioles, not like in the league, obviously, but like a great pitching season for the Orioles. Yeah. I mean, dude saw a lot of AAA hitting last year, which is more advanced than what DL has seen in his career. He could just have that good first year success where he's better than the more touted prospects. More seasons, a little more ready to go. Yeah. 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 I'd probably could have gone Kyle Bradish too, but. DL's been my guy for a long time, so I'm sticking with him. Rookie of the year, Brad? Lots of good ones to pick from here. Uh, a boring pick, but Adley. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I could I could go outside the box and pick somebody else, but that seems like kind of a no-brainer pick, so give me Adley. Yep. If he's even close to being as advertised, yeah, it's going to be him. That's I mean, I hope pick. so. That's hope not who I'm picking, but I'm <laughs> I'm just I'm just agreeing with what you're saying. If it's not him, then he probably is underachieving. Yes. So. Absolutely. I'm gonna play off of what I kind of just talked about in Cy Young. I'm gonna go with Kyle Bradish for a lot of the same reasons I just said, but I think Adley's the obvious pick, but Kyle Bradish can also put together a very impressive season. I'm really glad neither of you said this so that I could say it. Um, Grayson Rodriguez. Um, he has he two stu- months of like the ball that we know he's capable of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's he's starting in AAA. He's pitching Friday, I think. Yeah. Um, they're, they're trying to get him to the majors, man. If it's, All he's going to need is a couple good outings in AAA. And then at that point, he's got nothing left to prove. And what yeah. does this team need more than anything? They need starting pitching. Yeah. So, you know. Honestly, it's a really big deal to me that he starts hot out of the gate. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to say like, oh, if he has a bad start, then uh, we're, we're screwed. No, I just wanted to get here faster. So I wanted to start out. Start you out can't out let the, the front office talk themselves into, you know, maybe yep. he needs more time or letting them convince other people that he needs more time, even though he could go just a bad month of April and through June successful. And they'll still try to talk that same point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, sometimes you just got to force your way onto a roster. Yeah. You know. 
because if you're underachieving in the minors, you're not doing much to convince the to convince the front office that you're ready to go, even if you might be. So yeah, I would. I mean, I would look for I would look for Grayson to be here pretty quick if he this pitches. Is- if he pitches the way he did last year when he gets to AAA, as long as we don't see a drop off, I he's got nothing left to prove. Get him up here. Yeah, I feel like if a guy is playing well in the minors and you leave him there for too long, it can mess with his head because then it could cause him to start to press. Like, I've done what I had to do. Like, mm-hmm. what? I mean, <laughs> at any time, what happens if I have a bad start today? They might leave yeah. me down here all season. Like, you don't like, want those thoughts going through his head. Just yeah. Like, what more do I have to do type of thing? Yeah. 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 Agreed. I agree with you completely. This yeah. is where uh, Mike Elias's poor pitching staff construction will bite him in the ass. He will have no choice but to bring up the best option in Triple Or maybe that was the plan all along. Maybe. <laughs> I don't give him enough credit for that. No, I don't I don't actually think that. I don't no. actually think that. I think he was just working with what he had, trying to buy this time. And it sucks to watch, but it should all be coming to an end very soon. Yeah. I mean, the rotation I mean, at the end of this year could be so good. I mean... Like Could Lyles, be. no, but means Gray Rod, Bradish, DL Hall, best case scenario. That's awesome. Zimmerman, number five. I, I think Zimmerman's going to be a decent, pretty decent pitcher. I'm just saying, like, those other three guys are probably better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, like, Zimmerman and five is pretty good. Those guys. Zimmerman is a like Andrew Kashner guys that just sticks around for like 12 years and just plays like the fifth rotation spot on like a decent team. Like a Jordan Lyles. <laughs> like a Jordan pod. Lyles. The Robinator, he's gonna force the issue. Drew Rom by the end of Dude, the year. Let's go. Yes, I think he'll get I think he'll get to triple A very soon. Yes. Nope. I think you know, you guys mentioned when we talked about him before that despite how well he pitched in double A, um, he wasn't there for very long. So yeah, I think he forces his way up to triple A pretty soon, especially if we see some graduations like Grayson, like DL. Another friend Rash. of the pod, Zach Pete can end up in Norfolk too. Yes. Yep. Zach. Freaking peak, dude! Hell yeah! I was I was really excited to see him uh, to in see Bowie. him get the call up to Bowie. That's that's really good. He's moving right along. He's moving right along. Well, yeah, the only reason I mentioned Drew first is because he's already been in Double A. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, we're just we're just talking about you yeah. know guys we're excited about guys we like to see. It's a very free form episode. Um, but let's get back on track here, Brad. Um, who's your most improved player this season? I'm going to go with Austin Hayes. I'm looking to see like a, a poor man's version of Adam Jones this year. <laughs> I Austin like it. Hayes, I like it. Approved. I mean, he's the same like kind of player. Right? He really I mean, is. He's, yeah. he's a lo- he, he's a free swinger, not a high OBP guy, but he's an athletic center fielder with a good arm who hits for power. Yep. And yeah, probably having the low 300s on base, but will end up with a decent OPS nonetheless. I like yeah. to pick poor man. I, I think a healthy Austin Hayes hits 20 plus bombs this year. Well, he did hit 20. He hit 22 last year and 488 at bats. So yeah, That's he's a major part of my uh, hottest take for the season. So I will save any comments oh, on shit. that for later, but um, <laughs> my most improved I'm going with Jorge Mateo. Um, dude didn't get enough of a sample size last year with the Orioles. And when he did, he was, he was pretty good. I mean, impressive. Like he's got some flashy tools. I, that speed is obviously number one, but the way he's been hitting with the Orioles has been good enough for a middle infielder of his uh, ilk. Do you guys remember, Brad, you probably don't because you didn't watch Big Club last year, really, but I Josh, probably will still remember. I probably shortly will after remember. Mateo got here, maybe it's in his, I don't know, probably a week after, they're playing at Camden, and he hit one out. He drove one out into the power alley, um, like, you know, left center field. Yeah. You know, the, you know, contact is made. The camera pans to showing, you know, center fields. So you see the guy running back on it. Ball gets down. And as the center fielder picks up the ball and he's starting to throw it back in, the camera pans back to Mateo. And, like, before the ball is even out of the center fielder's hand, he's, like, halfway to third. Yeah, it was nuts, dude. That was, like, <laughs> our first, like, sight of Jorge Mateo. And he was just, like, I, I couldn't believe it. Like, you don't see speed like that on a baseball field. No. Yes, I do remember seeing highlights of him being very fast. So I don't He's, specifically remember that play in question, but I probably saw it. I'll have to if I also have to try to get on YouTube and see if there's a video of it. It's just it's just mind blowing to like 
oh, this should be a double. And then you like the camera pans back and he's just like trotting into third before the ball's even back into the infield. Like not even close. And it wasn't even, it wasn't even one of those, like a lot of times with triples, especially with a player that isn't as fast, like something has to happen in the outfield. Like the outfielder has to like bobble it or has to take a strange bounce off of something. This one, he's just put the ball in the gap and he's just so fast. It was a standup triple. Creates a lot of like unmeasured runs that way. And very mm-hmm. insane. Do you remember that week last year? It was right when we got Mateo as well. When the Orioles just decided we were going to be a running team. Yeah. <laughs> Richie yeah. Martin was stealing bases. We were doing hit and runs with Ryan Mountcastle and Mateo was stealing like every five minutes. Mm-hmm. Cedric, that was fun. 30, Cedric had 30 stolen bases, like 30 plus, maybe 30 on the dot. He was yeah. the only one <laughs> doing yeah. any of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who you got, Ryan? Hmm. This is, this might be stupid, but this is just, I actually didn't prepare for my most improved player. I kind of glossed over this one, but off the top of my head, I'm going to say Jorge Lopez. I like it. Um, we saw a lot of struggles from Lopez in the rotation to the point where every time he started, all of us were just begging for him to be put in the bullpen. And it's finally what's happening. Uh, so uh, I think we're going to see good things out of Lopez from the bullpen. So just from a number standpoint, Jorge Lopez is my most improved player. Yeah, that different role for him should be immensely beneficial. I mean, we saw it last year. He could not get through the fifth inning to save his life, like literally like an ERA in the high tens. Yeah. <laughs> but and yeah, those it's a no brainer when you have a pitcher that can consistently shut lineups down one, sometimes two times through. That just screams reliever. You need an inning out of him, throw him out there. He can get it done. Absolutely. Yeah. They should have tried it so much earlier last year. Yeah, they really should have. <laughs> they well, waited until mid-August. I think it was for lack of options. Yeah. You know, I mean, Elias kind of addressed it the other day, but none of Kramer, Aiken, Louther, Wells, um, Wells and who am I missing? Zimmerman was hurt. None of those guys show that they could do it. So it was kind of like you don't really have a choice. You just kind of have to roll with him and hope maybe he doesn't trip up in the fifth inning this time. (laughs) Yeah. Good answer. Yep. Lopez is my guy. Brad, reliever of the year. I'm going to ride the Felix Batista hype train, and I'm going to take him. I think he's going to end up being our closer. He's got the live arm. I had a lot of fun watching him in Bowie, and I hope he translates that success to the big league level this year. Yeah, good answer. Um, I'm going to take Ryan's most improved player. I'm taking Jorge Lopez because I, you know, as much as I'd love to hop on the Felix Batista hype train like this as well for this pick, I'm just going to pick. Lopez, because he's been in the majors before, there won't be as much of a learning curve like Bautista will probably have to go through. And I like Jorge Lopez, even when he was a starter, I kind of had like a little thing because he just had that that stuff, man. <laughs> but they used him as a starter for too long. Another reason I'm picking Felix Bautista is because he laughed at my friends and I drunken shenanigans at the Bay Sox game one Friday night last year. So <laughs> he clearly thinks I'm hilarious. So he's basically my best friend. So feel like Batista. Christ. Okay. I like it. Uh, my reliever of the year is also Felix Batista. I think he's got too nasty stuff to not at least have some marginal success in the bigs. We so, just traded yeah. away the other candidates. <laughs> the only Tate would be a candidate, but mm. I don't know. I'm he's like the, the non-starter version of Lopez. Like he was never really a starter since like low minor league levels, but Tate just hasn't been that guy in the majors yet. He initially started when we acquired him in the Britain trade, but they moved into the bullpen, I guess, the next year and probably like a month or two into the 2019 minor league season. He actually was supposed to get a start one game last year. I felt bad for him. It was like his opportunity. And then I think it got postponed and then he never – that sounds about right. <laughs> he, he never got a start after that. <laughs> Poor guy. I would have been like I would have at least liked to see him get a shot. I'm not sure he would have been the answer, but I would have liked to see him get a shot. Yeah. 
a reason not to, especially last year, the way the starting yeah. pitching was. I mean, since we're all about evaluating. Yeah. So quietly one of the more underrated guys on this roster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's got a really nice uh he's got a really nice sinker. A lot of movement yeah. on that thing. And his, like the way his velocity's well. been going up over the last couple seasons, like he'll just randomly add like three miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And so just a little little score update for you guys. Uh the tides came back from five nothing down and just won on a walk-off single by Robert Newstrom. How about that? Big yep. Rob, mutual friend of the pod. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> friend of the, friend. Yeah, friend of the pod go. by association. Yep. <laughs> I have been I, saying that more for some reason. I forget actually, who else I said it about. I'm pretty sure he did like our episode on Twitter where we had Dorian on. So mm-hmm. yeah. So he like I mean he's he's a fan of ours. My God. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Jemai Jones is gonna be making his case again this year, guys. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. That Get rid of Od- Odor and Owings, and we will be right there with the same shit we had last year. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm so annoyed about the Owings thing, dude, and the Odor. I mean, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there, guys. We'll get we will. There. I think I'm we are there. the video right now. Uh, looks like Charlotte had their closer on. Um, first guy, I guess one of the, who I don't know who it was got on, and uh, Jemai went down and got a low fastball and absolutely rocked it into the right center gap. For a double and the whoever was on first came around all the way around to score tied it at five and then i guess newstrom scored uh what's his face jones on the on the next one. Oh, it was uh vavra vavra was on first mm. so yeah but what did jones do with his glove in that game right <laughs> you know i think i heard that every time a ball was hit his way he would just take his glove off and throw it at it which just Goes to show he really does need more AAA seasoning. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can't really fix guys like that sometimes, you know. I hope he has like a 10-year MLB career and we can still talk about this shit like, at the end of his career. But can he field the ground ball? <laughs> can he field a routine ground ball? Yes. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I want Rock to lose his shit on Twitter because this has been going on for like several years and he just can't mm-hmm. take it anymore because of one article he wrote. Yep. <laughs> Calling O's fans mouth breathers. Shout out to Bryce. Armchair GM. <laughs> Let's see. Oh my God. What? Uh, it was just uh the the Newstrom walk off. He like they call it a single, obviously, because it was only like one base to win the game. Oh. But like he f- freaking crushed it man it was like off the <laughs> wall on the fly <laughs> oh, so it wasn't a real single it was a uh, he got no. screwed out of extra base hit because of semantics yeah because of yeah. jemai jones had the balls to just you know score on the play yeah can't believe yes. that guy can't base run either oh my god yeah he crushed that ball yep it looks like off the base of the wall on the fly but didn't newstrom actually get on sports center last year which is pretty uncommon for yes because he a mid-tier hit, prospect like he a hit 500 that. foot home run like a, a legitimately <laughs> 500 foot home run His that's so random insane dude that's so random like he, he didn't hit that it's not like he blew the world away with his power numbers last year though right no and they were good for a guy who wasn't I mean, expected yeah. to be anything <laughs> Also, Jamai is going with a like a long braids look this year, and I kind of dig it. He looks like a football player. Nice. Hope it's to see him nice. in Baltimore probably by the end of May at best yeah. or at worst, maybe. Yep. But hopefully that, that was exciting. Fits. Recapping a little Norfolk action right there. I think it's going to be a fun team this year, guys. Yeah. Very fun. Talent's just going to be flying through there this year. Mm-hmm. All right, Josh. Why don't we get to the meat and potatoes of this episode and talk about the opening day roster that came out today? Of course, of course. Uh, this is mostly finalized. Uh, the rosters are expanded to 28 players for the month of April, I believe. I believe part of May as well. But um, yeah, yeah. It's what, that's to accommodate for the shortened spring training, right? Yes, exactly. Helping out arms. So the Orioles are carrying 14 position players and 14 pitchers. Um, I'm just going to start with the way it's listed on the tweet. Uh, Zach Silver, thank you for putting this in uh, condensed form for us. Uh, oh, no. Infielders, we are carrying six of them. Mountcastle, Mateo, Odor, Urias, Gutierrez, and Owings. Thoughts? Owings sucks. <laughs> uh, most of them suck. 
honestly, except for wait, let's go through that again. I mean, Mount Castle is gonna is gonna win MVP, uh, at least of the team, maybe more. Uh, we'll get into that later. Um, <laughs> Owings, yeah, sucks. Gutierrez, Josh, that's your boy, but <laughs> Ryan and I both agreed he's the shitty player that's going to do enough to make people think that he's good and have him stick around longer. Yep. Did I already mention Odor? Yeah, he's trash. Um, uh, uh, who are the ones I'm missing? I don't Mateo have Mateo and Urias. I mean, Mateo's an exciting player because he's got otherworldly speed. I don't think he's an amazing hitter, but at least he'll be entertaining from a speed standpoint, running out ground balls and stealing bases. So at least I can deal with watching that. And then Urias, uh, okay, I mean, he had a decent year last year. I don't think he's a long-term master either. So I'm not that hyped about the infield as of right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to mostly echo what Brad said, but I like Urias and Mateo a little more than you do. Um, no, they're not long-term pieces, but I'm perfectly happy with Urias and Mateo as placeholders. They're at least They at least bring value. Urias can swing a good bat. He's he's kind of like he reminds me of like our new Hanser Alberto, just a slap singles hitter. But the dude gets on base, so I like him. Uh, but yeah, Owing sucks. Odor sucks. Gutierrez sucks. So it's gonna suck watching those guys. But hopefully, some guys like Jemai we were just talking about will force their way up and force guys like Owings and Aaron Favre roster. Taron Vavra. Taron Vavra, too. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of guys, man. I mean, there's a Bannon, lot of guys. Bannon's gonna Bannon. get hot here. So Bannon, I mean he, the, he got a hit tonight, by the I mean, way. He's off to a one for seven, but you know, if he goes two for his next three, then he's batting three hundred. So we're still early here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you look at this. I don't think Odor and Owings finished the season on an Orioles uniform. So. I don't I don't think so either. Nah. You, you can't do that, right? <laughs> If they do, there we've got problems. I mean, this just Pat Vileka all over again if you're doing this. I mean, mm-hmm. there's so many options that are way more exciting and more hopeful. I will take Richie Martin over Chris Owings right now. Um, who did not make the team. Who did not yeah. make the team. He was cut today. Same with Tyler Nevin. Um, I mean, obviously. Nevin didn't actually get cut, though. He just got sent to AAA. He got sent to AAA, but yeah. You like Mountcastle here. You like Mateo. You like Urias. I love Urias, man. I'm, I'm probably higher on him than I should be but because he's probably not a long-term piece. But if he can be like a Ben Zobris like bench bat for like a competitive O's team like in his yeah. early 30s, that's like best case scenario for him. I, I love that for him. I'd have no issue with that. Yeah, I mean. Utility guy. He can play. He can play check, second, short, and third. I mean, he's like. He's like Ryan Flaherty with, with better offensive, offensive talent. numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got a good story too, man. He played a lot of years in the Mexican league, like through most of his twenties claimed off waivers by the O's. I like it. Yep. And uh, I am, you know, generous to Gutierrez, I guess you could say looks like a ball player. What can I say? But uh, I mean, if he doesn't hit, I'm not there for him. It's third base. We got guys coming. Can't really be fucking around with that position yeah. too long. Pat Dorian would be more exciting there, but if Gutierrez yeah. can't hit at the MLB level there, and if Pat Dorian's not setting AAA on fire, I guess you leave him there until a better option rises. But I don't think it'll take all season for them to figure that out. Yeah. Yep. All right. All Agreed. set on infielders. Complete. Yeah. Yes. Yep. We're we're good. Need we're to good. Go. I mean, we sh- we, we should also point out that they're starting for the first month with 28 man rosters. Yes. So one of these guys, probably one will be either released or sent down. I bet that's Owings rule. If I, maybe I just, that's just what I want to happen, but <laughs> that's maybe probably I, Owings rule. Maybe, it's probably outfielder too. Yeah. maybe an outfielder too, since we have six of them on the roster. Yeah. Going into that. I can't believe we have six outfielders, man. This is getting Cause all these guys played MLB innings on the outfield. <laughs> Uh, except for Mancini, I guess. But Hayes, Mullins, Mancini, Santander, McKenna, and Stewart are your six outfielders. Yeah, I just don't want to see Stewart here for very long. <laughs> McKenna yeah. is what he is. He's a defensive replacement. Mr. Everything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Mullins, Stud, Hayes, the poor man's Adam Jones this year. I'm sorry, I don't have this up in front of me. <laughs> who, are, who are the other two I'm missing? Santander and you already Santa- meant, uh, Mancini, I guess. But if you yeah, I, I don't even think of Mancini as an outfielder. He's more no. DH. Um, you know, Santander is definitely watchable. He's a solid player. We 
are all pretty much in agreement that he's probably going to be shot this year, but they'll get more from him if he comes out hot out of the gate. So let's go Tony Taters. Tony Taters. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty much where I stand on the outfield. We've touched on the outfield a lot on this show, but I mean, like something's got to give here and it's this year. Stowers and Newstrom, as we've already talked about at great length are right there. Could be up honestly, probably by the end of May, <laughs> if they do decent in AAA to start the year and Santander and Stewart are kind of the odd man out. McKenna still has five years of team control and he does have the tools that, you know, you like for a bench outfielder can't hit and he's going to have to get better at that. But <laughs> Uh, Santander is getting paid more money and has a value to other teams and DJ Stewart sucks. So yeah, DJ Stewart is hot ass and yeah, I, I was a little more upset about guys like Diaz getting cut from camp. Yeah. Just because like with the infielders, it's like, yeah, these guys are ass, but there's no, there's no obvious guy in waiting other than like Jamai, but even Jamai is not, he's not a superstar waiting to go. He's a decent minor league baseball player that we'd like to see what can ha- what he can get done at the major league level. His ceiling could be Ramon Urias. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could be looking at something like that for sure. I think Jamai could be a little better than Ramon, but yeah, that's, but there's guys, there's obvious guys to try in the outfield. So with you know Newstrom and Diaz getting cut, God, I would have loved to see them so much more than Stewart. He's probably going to be the opening day lineup too, isn't he? DJ, of course. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm sure Santander gets the left field start or wherever they want to put him. But I mean, he'll, yeah, he'll play if- right. It'll be well. No, no. Never mind. I don't know why I said yes to that. If it, it'll be, uh, it'll be Hayes. Mullins, Santander, I'm yeah. sure. Left to right. Oh, uh, Hayes has got more ground to cover in left field this year. So, yeah, they probably. Uh, he's, that's fine. There. Hayes is a center fielder. He'll take care of it. Well, right. That's what I'm saying. They won't want Santander over there because right field is no. small here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if DJ Stewart gets 150 at bats as an Oriole this year, it's a tragedy. If he gets 100 at bats as an Oriole, it's a tragedy. I so think 100. it's a tragedy if he gets one. <laughs> You're absolutely right, but I'm thinking realistically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's unrealistic to say he won't, but yeah. He yeah, got I what, know. like 300 at bats last year? Too many. I'm, I'm cross checking this right now, but too many. Uh, 318 plate appearances in 2021. That is too many. <laughs> you guys know that he's going to start out hot out of the gate for the first week and then suck for three months, but that first week is going to buy him three months, right? Yeah, that's happening. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. Any more outfield takes? Because we can quickly move through catchers. Nope. All right. Chirinos and Ben Boom. Uh, ben Boom is gone as soon as Adley is ready, and Adley will be the starting catcher. Not a lot to analyze there. Apologies oh. to Mr. and Mrs. Ben Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Congratulations on for congratulations to Anthony for making your first opening day roster at age 32. But, uh, yeah, you're just here until Adley's good to go. Sorry. You know, I wish Ben Boom was here last year instead of, like, Cisco for a lot of the year and uh, Austin wins because I liked his swing a lot in spring, and he actually hit decent in spring. He has decent major league experience as well, more than wins did. And uh, that would have been a more fun platoon than Cisco slash wins. But uh, sorry, Anthony, you're out as soon as Adley's here. Yeah. Sorry, dude. Yeah, and then uh, we're starting rotation. John Means, Jordan Lyles, Tyler Wells, Bruce Zimmerman, and we have three bulk candidates. That's Mike Bauman, Dean Kramer, and Keegan Aiken. I want to see. I want to see Magic Mike get it. I want. Ma- I want Magic Mike to get a shot in that fifth spot. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, give me Big Mike over Kramer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like Dean, but. He didn't – I'd feel a lot better if he had a better final start yeah. in spring. Um, he didn't look very good. Had some stri- he, he His strikeout numbers were good in spring, right. but he, he did get hit around a little bit. I don't know, man. I like Dean, but his time is running out, in my opinion. 
It's like that Elias quote the other day. None of these guys have stepped up yet, and uh, it's kind of where we're scrambling for in our third spot. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to go like three Fuck bolt guys. Mike for- Elias for being mean to our bad pitchers. <laughs> a jerk. <laughs> I don't hate that was- for the fifth spot, just building up three guys to do the entire game. You save your bullpen a full day out of every five days, but I'm assuming it's like what you guys are saying, where like they're going to build Mike Bauman up and then probably give him a little bit of run there this year before any yeah, other guys. Like a piggyback kind of thing where Bauman might pitch three innings and then one of the other two might pitch three innings behind him. You have to be got- careful though, because Tyler Wells is also in the rotation and they will be uh he won't be able to go like eight innings on like a really good day. I don't right. think he's built That's up true. enough for that. Well, uh, yeah. one of the one of those guys can piggyback Tyler Wells and the mm-hmm. other two, one of them can piggyback the other one. And yep. then that's competition going on right there. It's yeah, a better top. dynamic than last year. For sure. Competition between young guys is good. Sink or swim. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. And if you can't do it, here comes D.O. Hall. <laughs> and Kyle Bradish. And after him, Gray Rod. So, mm-hmm. for him to start the year, you're probably gone. Time is yep. ticking. Yeah. I like it. I yeah. like that competition. It's good. It's very and we good. do have a little wiggle room to use some of those guys potentially just as relief pitchers, long relief guys, because we have seven relief pitching arms on the roster right now. Uh, Dylan Tate, Paul Fry, Jorge Lopez, Sionel Perez, Brian Baker, Joey Creeball, and Felix Bautista. Yeah, that bullpen is very yeah. underwhelming, but uh, yeah, I don't like we'll it. We'll see. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I will say I did in the group chat shit on Brian Baker maybe a little bit more than he deserved because he looked like he had some actually fairly enticing numbers. So I'll give him a shot. I'll give him a shot. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, I like Brian Baker in spring. Perez, yeah. Baker, and Creeble were all waiver claims last year. Yeah, I'm not so hyped about Perez or definitely not Creeble. Perez looked good in spring. Creeville did okay last year, I guess, for us. But, I mean, yeah, like I said, you got that wiggle room to use those long relief guys for a longer stint in the year, and you can dump one of these scrub relief pitchers, whoever doesn't. It's like sink or swim yeah. again. If those guys don't perform, got a couple of relievers I'm fans of down in AAA. So. Oh, Felky Peralta, what'd he go last night? Like four innings, uh, scoreless four innings. Uh, I think he allowed one earned run, but, yeah. One earned run, yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Are we good on that? I think we've successfully broken down the major league roster pretty well. Yeah. Right. I mean, we've been talking about these guys for months, but if you want more uh, in-depth things about each position, we did an episode at the end of the season last year that was like very in-depth on each uh, section of the O's. Yeah. All right. And guess what, guys? For the first time in 2022, it's time for the fantasy draft. We're back. Yes. You're so back. So oh. fucking back. It's going to be a little different this year. It's a little more streamlined. Um, the concept was fun last year, but it turned out to be a shit ton of work. So yeah, we're, we're streamlining. Not that. A, we're not a little, that. <laughs> yeah, because because <laughs> until the very end, Brad did the scoring every week. It took me over an hour every time. I mean, yeah, it is partially my fault for procrastinating. Well, I. I had to procrastinate because I needed the whole week's worth of. Yeah, you have to wait data, until all so. the the data is compiled. Yeah, so it's not my fault. Yeah, no, I'm a victim. It's not your fault. It's I'm not your fault. And you're a working man. You know, you got stuff to do. Right. Yeah. So we're streamlining a little bit. Like I said, um, we're now going to take three hitters and one pitcher from anywhere in the system. Um, no requirements. Uh, well, there is one required. Other than one MLB player is required. Yep. Absolutely. Well, I would say even though we never really got an official count, it was pretty clear that the order last year went Ryan, Brad, Josh. <laughs> yep, Josh <laughs> sucks we can in all, fantasy. I think we can all agree. Terrible, man. <laughs> but we will uh, definitely keep an accurate tab this year of who wins every week. So, mm-hmm. Yep, so Ryan at the bottom of the word doc, I have – you can just write down who is on I each team that. there. <laughs> for, <laughs> for the first uh, – at first, I didn't realize what you were doing. I just saw you start typing my name. I thought you were going to say something dumb. Just because you knew <laughs> I was looking at the doc. <laughs> it has to be at least some sort of small reward. So let's say something along the lines of whoever wins the next time the three of us meet up at a game, the other two combine to pay for their that person's ticket. How about that? I like that a lot. Okay. Yeah. 
It's going to be. I mean, I, I mean, I'm. <laughs> I, I'm down to do more than that, but you guys aren't degenerates like me. So <laughs> you are the in-house degenerate. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. So am I picking first since I was the clear runaway champion last year? That sounds yeah. like the fair way to start it off this year. Give yep. me my boy, 2022 AL MVP, Brian Mountcastle. Ooh. I mean, I had a feeling that wasn't making it to the third pick. <laughs> Hell no. No Hell chance. no. All right, then give me Cedric Mullins. Okay. <laughs> Getting the uh, MLB players out of the way Very real much. early. I'm going to go with my pitcher. No, that's false. I'm not. Jordan <laughs> Westberg. Jordan Westberg got a decent spring, but he got to see some MLB arms. He's going back to double A where he's going to absolutely rake. It's the same level he was at the end of the year last year. I think he's a yeah. good uh, April candidate. Yeah. I like it. I really like Jordan Westberg. We might see him this year. We may. I think I think we might. September call up, I'm hopeful. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh I'm gonna take my pitcher now. Give me give me Tyler Wells. Okay. okay. Holding out for that good first start. I like it. I'm sad oh, yeah, we are not seeing him on opening day. I really thought he'd be the four starter. I know. It would have been nice. I, I'm okay with Bruce, though. Yeah, Especially, hometown kid. It's really cool, too. Yeah, hometown kid getting a star on opening day. I think that's awesome. Yeah, not mad about that. i tell you what. You show me Tyler Wells. I show you Alex Wells. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the bad Wells. <laughs> nope, not this year. Not this year, son, son. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will be taking Austin Hayes. Nice. Okay. All right. Ryan. Oh, man. The guy who didn't write shit for his first pick or his second pick. Oh, his I didn't, know I was... didn't do anything. Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Total piece of shit. Uh, give me Gunner. Give me old Gunner oh, Henderson. Old Gunny. Damn it. Oh, we're just doing last names. Sorry, I'll just put Henderson. You can do whatever you want, really. <laughs> nope. Sticking with it. Give me Caesar Prieto. Yes. Ooh. Aberdeen. He's either going to be way too mature for Aberdeen or he's going to like struggle for like two months. It's going to be one of those two. He's either going to nowhere in look, between. <laughs> yeah, he's either going to look like that guy in um shit, what was that movie called? The, the baseball movie with David Spade. Oh, and bench they get warmers. like, and they get that like, yeah, bench warmers. He's got the uh, his birth certificate is just a picture of him and I am twelve for Nolan and Crayon. That's gonna be Preto. That's gonna it's gonna be Preto and uh in high A. Either that, or we're gonna get Victor 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 uh, Victor, Victor. Yeah, <laughs> <gonna> say, yeah. <laughs> one uh, of the two. I will be taking uh, Rob Newstrom. Uh, dude is primed to have a power year again. The walk-off single he just hit doesn't count. I know it doesn't, but yeah, <laughs> tomorrow tomorrow's games are when they it starts tabulating. Yep, I wrote yep. this down like six hours ago. Okay, all right. Hmm. I don't know who to take my last pick here, guys. A lot of guys. There's a lot of guys. It's, it's much easier with this new format too. I'm not stretching for guys like Lamar Sparks. <laughs> we don't have him anymore. He got cut. I know we don't have him anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that is okay. a pick I made last year. It is. Uh, Dominican Summer League hasn't started yet, right? No, no. that's not till like June. No, you got a while on that. Yeah, I was going to take like Michael Hernandez just to spice it up. There's like a few big names here that I'm like very surprised yeah. you're like deliberating over this pick. <laughs> it's been a long day. My brain's not functioning the level it should. So that's probably part of if it. If you look at a top 30 list right now, you're going to hate yourself, but you're not allowed to do that right now. <laughs> Colton Kowser. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very consi- much. I was Colton Kowser. <laughs> I was considering. <laughs> There's another um, one, uh, but I won't, I'm yeah, not going to pick. Kobe Mayo. There it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah. It's like, holy shit, Ryan, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, I don't know. I'm sorry. Long day. Okay. Uh, I'm taking my picture in front of the pod, Jerome. Yeah. So the only reason I didn't go with Rob is I feel like he's not going to be stretched out enough. I think he's going to pitch like three innings. That's the only reason I didn't take him. Maybe, but is Alex well stretched out enough to go more than like three or four innings? Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's stretched out just fine. He's just not good enough to go three or four innings. He will be this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, nice. All right. That's way quicker than last year. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And it's calculate, calculating it will be a lot quicker, too. Mm-hmm. Man, I wrote this in my notes on my phone like four days ago to say on this episode. I don't remember the context around it. I think it was when the trade happened, but I said, I have a weird take. Low talented offensive players are more fun than low talented pitchers. Mm-hmm. That's my take. <laughs> you said low talented offensive players? Like guys who are bad are more fun when they're offensive players than guys who are bad when they're pitchers. I think I hate them all, but that's fine. It's your hot take, so. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote that down, but I did. All right. Draft over. There we go. Sweet. Can't wait to uh, bring home number one this year. It's redemption year. Mm, okay. Yep. I'm on my revenge tour. Okay, b Red. No okay. Ryland Bannon selection. What? I thought about it. I thought about it. <laughs> So our last segment tonight is going to be our hottest take for the 2022 season. Yes, sir. I want you guys to start. I tasked the boys with uh, coming up, maybe something that probably won't happen, but, you know, give us something that's, uh, you know, a little fiery, an outstanding take about, you know, in a good way, hopefully. But okay. Doesn't mean you know, it's going to happen. You want me to start it out here? You go yep. right ahead, buddy. So I went up to the casino yesterday, made all of my preseason bets for the year. And I don't know if you're going to be able to read this right here. Can you guys read this? I don't see that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So basically at the end of the year, I'm going to be 25 grand richer because Ryan Mountcastle is going to win AL MVP off of that hundred dollar bet that I made. So here we go, baby. There's the take. <laughs> There it is. Ryan Mountcastle, 2022 AL MVP. Yep. It's hot. He's going to have lineup protection this year. For the record, I did also put MVP bets on uh, Adley and Cedric Mullins, but they don't pay out quite as much. That's crazy that Adley has a higher payout than Mountcastle. Uh, uh, Mountcastle has a higher payout. Yeah, I mean, Mount- uh, higher odds, I guess. Yeah, so Adley has slightly is slightly more likely to win AL MVP, but I also didn't put as much money. I put like fifty, oh. because I don't know how, I don't know when he's actually going to debut. Yeah, so that Adley was fifty dollars to win ten grand, and Cedric was forty dollars to win three point five grand. So there you go, beautiful. But, but the hot take, the official hot take, is Ryan Mountcastle. <laughs> I, like I dig it. it. Yep. I dig mm-hmm. it. That would be super sick. Yep. And it would drive the value up of that uh, out of 99 Mount Castle car that I just bought. Yeah, there you go. So you make some money off it too. If he wins oh, yeah, MVP, dude. I'm selling off like 90% of my Mount Castle PC. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, me too. Value will never be higher. Sell that Inception Relic Auto that I've got. <laughs> Nobody ever hit me up for that either. I can't believe that's not selling. Like someone, I, I think want I, I, that. Probably, I probably priced it too high. Whatever. That that's matter. probably true. What you got, Ryan? <sighs> I'll let oh. you to go first because mine's the dumbest right. one. <laughs> Mine was like, you know, well thought out. <laughs> anyway, I'm taking uh, an Austin Hayes has a all-star caliber season this year. As we've seen in the past, Orioles don't really get treated that well on the national level. Mullins couldn't even make the starting all-star, all-star lineup, if not for Mike Trout being injured. Um I don't know if he will make the all-star team, but I have him, if he plays 120 games, being a four-plus war player, uh, solidifies his future in the Orioles outfield. And uh, like Austin Hayes, looking forward. Also uh, had a kid the other day. Congratulations. <laughs> so speaking of that, I scrolled across it on Instagram, and I scrolled, and I was sitting next to my wife, and I was like, oh, hey, look, Austin Hayes and his wife had, uh, had a kid. And she just like looked at it, and she was like, his hairline is so bad. <laughs> I was like, it's, yeah, it's pretty bad. It is. I was trying to show you the baby, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> he does have a terrible hairline. 
Gets to wear a hat okay. for a living, though. Can I have two hottest takes? Because one is kind of contingent on something we don't know is happening yet. Okay, go for it. So, my first one, my if, my if hottest take is if he spends the majority of the season at the major league level, like Mike Elias says he will, <laughs> DL Hall receives Cy Young votes. I mean, oh. it's not out of the realm of possibility. That like, is my is the only unlikely. reason that's not my sole hottest take is just because if if he's you know if he's only here for half a year, obviously it's not going to happen. If we get a close to full season of Deal Hall, he will get Cy Young votes. That's my hot take. So I'm looking at it right now. How many guys get award votes? Because like in the past, it's been like down to like 25 sometimes, like depending on the year. Yeah. I want to see like what the last couple of years have looked like. Like MVP voting, they didn't went down to 20 votes. Cy Young, they went to 11. But I mean, that's not out of the realm of possibility. And, and like it's by league too. Well, right. So yeah. like it would be 11 guys out of the American League. So like it's not super far fetched, but like, you know. So, but my if the ill hall takes a while to get here, hot take is. I don't even know if I can say this with a straight face. Um, Dean Kramer has a sub three ERA. Jesus. <laughs> I felt that one. If you said sub five, my reaction would be the same. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Leave Dean alone. Right. Leave him alone. Jeez, man. <laughs> Hey man, they're we're called all pulling hot takes. For him. They're called hot takes for a reason. We know we're these all are kind of silly. Guys, don't tweet at us. We know. We know. <laughs> Someone's gonna clip this and be like, these guys don't know what the fuck they're talking about. These guys don't yeah. even know baseball like at all. They're gonna like tag John Boy in it, be like, look at these fucking idiots. Hey, I think Dean Crane is gonna get MVP votes. <laughs> bad publicity would still from John Boy would still be good publicity for us because they have such a right. big following. <laughs> right. Yep. I mean, there's a reason my bio says "Idiot Orioles Podcaster." So. Yeah, uh, the headline in the Baltimore Sun on Tuesday morning is <laughs> "Podcaster gets arrested after talking shit to Milwaukee Brewers at opening day game." <laughs> That's a picture of us behind the dugout, like. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like chucking bottles up over the netting. Yep. <laughs> Local podcaster found dead after hot take. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Holy shit. All right. This is a really fun episode, guys. A lot to cover, and I'm so glad baseball's back because we're just going to have episodes like this with tons of content, tons of things to talk about. Um, I'm excited. Uh, I said it in the Discord today, but Brad and I are going to uh, Bowie opening day on Friday, so it was an open invitation. Come hang out with us. It's going to be fun. See you at the George, baby. Hell yeah. Actually, I did have one of my friends hit me up and said he thinks he's coming, by the way. Yeah, I think I know a few people who are going to. So, so should be it'll dope. be fun. Um, yeah. Quick plug before we get out of here. Um, join us on Discord. Invite. Link is in the bio of the Twitter account, which is at Podcast Birdie. Uh, you can follow me. I'm at Ryan Set 94 You can follow Brad at KU Brad one Dell, and you can follow Josh at Out of State O's. Uh, anything you guys need to add in really quick before we get out of here? No, no uh, we're be here. on the lookout for a potential vlog coming up. We may do something like that for the uh, opening day. It's visit. not May. It's not May. I'm going to wear my GoPro around the whole All time. All right. We it's will be. be fun. Don't know when that'll be out, but we will be looking at <laughs> making something like that. So be, be yep. watching out. Yep. Yep. All right, guys. Um, hope you enjoy this episode. It'll be a day early. Um, we wanted to get in here and record after the uh, debut of the spring or not spring opening day roster. So enjoy the episode a day early and we'll catch you all next week. Have a good one. See you guys.